So being a spirit-led, compassion-driven church, we want to look at this practically at where the birth of this happened. And uh, we have uh, slides to go with us. And so, but we're going to start in Acts chapter 2. Uh, because we got to look at the birth of, of what happened in the church, that there was a birthing that happened, okay? And so before Acts chapter 2, Jesus was, uh, he gathered the disciples and they were with him. And then he told them, I want you to go and wait in Jerusalem. And I thought it was very interesting. Don't leave. I want you to go and wait. Because Jesus was ascending to heaven and he had already told them that the Holy Spirit was coming. He had told them that I am sending the helper to you. And so I don't need you to scatter and leave Jerusalem. I need you to stay in Jerusalem. I need you to go and wait because in just a few days, the Holy Spirit is coming. Woo, Jesus. So the, then Jesus ascends. And so they uh, obediently go and they wait. And other things happened within chapter 1. They needed to choose somebody else to, to fill the one spot of, of, of the one that uh, denied him and everything, the one that traded him, betrayed him and everything. And so they had all that to go through. And then finally they got to this spot where they were waiting. Interestingly enough that sometimes we got a problem with the waiting. Because we want things to happen but we don't want to wait. But Jesus said specifically that the promise is coming. And some of you need to hear this word today because some of you are still waiting on a promise. And the Lord is still saying, wait. If you get ahead of them, you might miss it. But the Lord is saying, wait on me. Because the promise is real and the promise is coming. Let's look at Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, we almost ready? Okay, we still got, to, okay, that's all right. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, a noise like a violent rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3, and tongues that looked like fire appeared to them distributing themselves, and a tongue rested on each of them. Notice it is a tongue of fire that rested on each of them. Verse number four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, my God. And, somebody say, and began to speak with different tongues as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. Something happened. They were all in that room, and it said about 120 of them were all gathered together, and something happened. We look here in the scriptures, and it tells us that there were certain events that happened. First of all, there was a violent wind that came through. There was a violent wind that just started just moving and, and shaking and just came into the room. Secondly, there appeared to be like tongues, and I actually had to go look this up. I'm like, what, what was y'all thinking? Because Luke is describing this. What were you thinking? What, what, what was in your mind that you described it to be a tongue of fire? And so I plugged it in on the internet. What does a tongue of fire look like? And interestingly enough, it is the flame shape. And that was what they saw as a tongue. It looked like a bunch of tongues of fire. And it rested on each one of the heads. And I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Then the next thing is... They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the next thing is, they began to speak in other languages. Interestingly enough, in the body of Christ, we want to take these events and we want to make a doctrine out of them. We want to, we want to go ahead and act like this is the greatest thing that happened. Now granted, something did happen, but I want you to know that when it comes to God, anytime he makes something happen, there's always a purpose attached to it. My God. He never does anything without purpose. Hallelujah. 
something happened. And that something happened had, had a purpose attached to it. And what happens with some of us today in ministry, some of us want to take this and think that this is what I'm supposed to do. Let me go out here and shout, ta, ta. You need to have the fire. You need to have this. And But we are missing what the Holy Spirit did. And we're going to come to it. It's going to come to it. Just be with me. Bear with me. So something happened. Each person was speaking in a different tongue. And I want you to see in verse 5, if you go there with me, please, starting in verse 5. Now, there were uh, Jews residing in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. Now, isn't it like God to do something with purpose while everybody's around? Because mind you, this is the day of Pentecost. Jerusalem is packed. Now, the 120, they went up there, and they're just like, man, Jesus is gone. I don't know what's going to happen. He told us to wait. I don't know what's up. But God already knew what the deal was. Jerusalem was going to be packed that day. Men from every nation are hearing a sound. It captured their attention. Verse 6 says, and, he, and when the sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered. Because each one of them, get this, was hearing these 120 speak in their own language. Now, let me just do something real quick. Mukama yeba zipwe. Webale katonda. Now, some of y'all are looking at me like, I have no idea what he said. And there's a little bit of bewilderment. There's a little bit of, what is this doing? Where is he going? So I can imagine that those people in that day, they were confused by the different sounds that they were hearing coming from the 120. There was a different sound that they were hearing. And some of them were hearing in their language. And I bet if somebody was from Uganda right here in this congregation, they would know exactly what I just said. Because they heard in their language. And they'd go, oh, who is this American? He is speaking our language. Hey, who is this? Hey, Benange. Who is this? And they would be so excited because, wow, he is speaking in our language. These people that were in the upper room waiting, they were, they were from uh, Galilee. And so people even noticed that these are Galileans. How are they speaking in my language? There are people there from every nation, every tribe. They are there in Jerusalem, and all of a sudden there's a mighty sound, and they're hearing something in their language. Hallelujah. Y'all know I like house music. And so I, 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 was in a, I was in Uganda. We were in downtown Kampala. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I heard the doom, 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 doom. And I was like, where is that sound? And I went looking for it, and I found it. And they was, and they was juking. It was, look, it was good. But my whole thing is that this sound was attractive because there was something that they were hearing. What was the something? Check it out. This is verse number 7. They were amazed and astonished, saying, why are not all these who are, uh, excuse me, why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born? Check the next verse. Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Paphia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around Corinne, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arab. We hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty deeds of God. God. All these people in Jerusalem are hearing something different. They're hearing about the praises of God. What's wrong with us when we are all speaking the same language in this room and can't nobody hear the praises of God? We can talk about everything else in our one-dimensional language. 
But these people were hearing the praises of God. Good people of the church this morning, where is the praise in your mouth? If the Holy Spirit has filled you, then talk about the praises of God. These people in Galilee, these people from Galilee, they are not even the wisest people. But yet and still, they are talking as if something happened. Everybody in that place is hearing the praises of God. It, it would be so awesome if you showed up at your job and all of a sudden the praises of God just started pouring out from various people at your job. Come on, think about it. Envision at your school. Envision at the bank. Envision if everybody started hearing the praises of God. Something would happen. But not everybody was pleased. Verse number 12, and they all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others were jeering and saying, they are full of sweet wine. Have you ever been accused of being off your head because of your praise? I have. See, y'all laughing. But people have talked about me. It don't take all that. Why he always jumping? Every time we go to a church, he always got to be sitting somewhere where he got to jump. Not everybody is happy about what you got to say. But that's okay. When you feel with the Spirit, the Spirit of God is going to move you in a way where you can't help but talk. I, I, I'm telling you, when you are filled with the joy of the Lord, you can't help but tell about it. Come on, y'all. When y'all was talking to that sweet thing... That sweet man or that sweet woman, when y'all when y'all was talking and, 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 and you was just so happy, they couldn't pull you down because you kept on going so high. Man, that woman of mine, whoo, ho, 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 ho. ain't nothing I will do. Nothing I won't do. Hallelujah. Just as high as a kite. And they're like, come down to reality. You just, you just out there. And that's how we're supposed to be about God. I'm just so out of this world. I'm connected with what's going on, but I'm just so in love. There's a love that I just need to tell you about. God has been good to me. He is so forgiving. He is so faithful. He is the one who raises me up every single day. When I don't think I can make it, he, de he delivers me. He gives me the hope that I need. When I'm feeling bad, he comes and he comforts me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't help but tell about it because this is what's going on in my life. Something happened. To that 120, something happened. And they began to speak in other languages because the power of God was moving so heavily. All because of those people that were in Jerusalem. It was attached to a purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Check this out. Verse number 14. Amen. Are we there? Oh, here we go. Amen. See, I spent time with these slides. Praise God. So look, here we go. But Peter. Somebody say, but Peter. Now, isn't it like God to choose an unlikely character to step up? Because out of the 120, why was it Peter that had to step up? There were 120 of them. Any of them could have did but Peter was the one. Filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter stepped up. Isn't it like God to choose the one that walked on water and all of a sudden turned away and had to be rescued by God because he didn't have enough faith? He dropped down in the water and Jesus had to rescue him. Isn't it like God to choose somebody who was always running at the mouth and saying stuff? Isn't it like God to choose the rough person of the group? My God, isn't it like God to choose the one that denied him three times? Isn't it like God that he would fill this individual with his spirit and now this one would be the one to proclaim the explanation that these people needed? Because these people were crying out, what is this? 
It would be interesting if you showed up, to, up at your job and you started just going around just happy as all get out. Just, oh, my goodness, God is so good. I love him today. I love him. He didn't bless my heart. I love him today. He didn't make me get so much joy. Oh, I love him today. He didn't give me the hope. And your cubicle neighbor says, what is this about? And you got the opportunity to share. Peter he gets the opportunity to stand before this crowd and he begins to deliver this message. Check it out. Dear, but Peter, taking his stand with the other 11, raised his voice and declared to them, men of Judah and all you who live in Jerusalem, know this and pay attention to my words. Peter is now taking on the character what Jesus told him. Now, the, the church is going to be built on you, this rock. He begins to step in this authority. And that's another thing that the Spirit of God will give you. He said, Jesus told the disciples, I want you to go and wait. Because when you go and wait, you are going to receive power. And this power will come on you. And you will be my what? Witnesses. See, I, I think some of us like the power, but we're a little slow on the witness. You hear what I'm saying? Because power, that means you make this thing about you. I got power. I, I got one up on you because I got power. And you ain't got none. And so we begin to make this thing about us. Preachers, we begin to make this thing about us. We begin to think because we can lay hands and different things like this, it becomes about us. And now I need a platform, and now I need a social media specialist, and now I need a wardrobe specialist. Because now I, I didn't got some power. I didn't made this about me. But the one thing that we're missing is the witness. Peter, he gets the authority from the Holy Spirit, and he begins to make the explanation. He says in verse 15, For these people are not drunk as you assume, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. Interesting thing, because he begins to go into the scriptures. He begins to pull scripture after scripture after scripture to reveal what has happened. Let's move on. Verse number 16. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see vision, and your old men will have dreams, and even on my male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Go on. Go on, and I will display wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. My God. These words are not foreign to these people because it's coming from the scriptures. They know that the book of Joel, this is coming from Joel. And so they know about this prophecy. And so they're hearing these words from Peter. And Peter is preaching them with conviction. And he begins to pull scripture after scripture from the Old Testament, letting them know that Jesus has come. Go to the next verse, because then he puts a closer on it. And you know how we do closers in the old church. And uh, you got to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, the Lord is in this place. The doors of the church are open. And, and we close with this real elegant close and everything. But let me, let's look at what, how Peter closed. Look at it. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him, Jesus, both Lord and Christ. The Jesus whom you crucified. is not the closer that we were thinking this become this became very accusatory the Jesus that you crucified 
after revealing all these prophecies that this is the Christ, I want you people to know here in Jerusalem, you crucified him. Filled with the Holy Spirit, only Peter could talk in that authority. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't forget, he's had audience before. And when he had audience before, he denied Jesus. And now he has audience, and he ain't worried about anything that these people got to say. This is the Jesus whom you crucified. I want to open up the curtain. Go to the next verse. Let's open up the curtain. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what are we to do? When the Holy Spirit as wor is at work, there's going to be a piercing of the heart. And I want to submit to you today that the greatness of Acts 2 was not found in the first four scriptures. The greatness of Acts chapter 2 is right here when they got pierced to the heart. The fact of the matter is, there's many of us today that are missing that piercing. We're waking up just going about our days, but we haven't gotten that piercing to the heart. That piercing to the heart that is going to reveal the truth of Jesus in us, what's really going on. Because we can be very much sleep on our own issues. Even to the point that we start pointing out everybody else's issue. And so we got fingers reaching out like this. Oh, that brother didn't did this. That sister didn't did this. That I can't stand it when they do this. Da, 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 da. And the Holy Spirit wants to pierce my heart. Because when the Holy Spirit will pierce our hearts, he sets us up to do what he wants us to do. When our heart is not pierced, it's amazing how cold we can get. When our heart is not pierced, it's amazing how distant we can get. It's amazing when our heart is not pierced, how the things of God no longer move us. We need to be asking God, the Holy Spirit, come pierce my heart this morning. Holy Spirit, come move my heart this morning. Holy Spirit, come move me. I don't want to miss any assignment that you have today. Those 120, they waited in the room for the Holy Spirit to come so that they could do the work of the Lord. Jesus told them, go and wait. The promise of the Holy Spirit is coming. And when he comes, he is going to reveal sin. When he comes, he's going to reveal truth. Go and wait. Some of us are getting up, just starting our day, not even talking to the Holy Ghost. We need to get up. We need to say, Holy Spirit, I need you to move in me today. I don't know what's on the agenda, but I know you know. I don't know what's ahead of me when I get to work, but I know you know. I don't know what phone call is coming that is going to alter my day, but I know you know. But I know you know. So reliant on the Spirit that I'm willing to say, here I am. Send me. Pierce my heart. Pierce my heart. These people were so pierced to the heart. The word of the Lord goes on and says, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what are we to do? Next verse. Peter said to them, repent, and each of you, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I love it what happens here because it's just like John and just like Jesus. The same message was going on. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. John the Baptist was saying it. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus was going around saying it. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus taught his disciples to do the same thing. Let them know, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And now they get filled with the Holy Ghost. Now they have the boldness to declare before this massive group of people, repent. 
and check this out, and be and receive the forgiveness of your sins. These people are now assembled where they're able to hear this message. And it is a move of the Holy Spirit that is in their midst. That they are asking now to be forgiven. He says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far away. As many as the Lord our God will call to himself. I love this because Peter gives the credit and the glory back to God. This whole message wasn't even about Peter, but he continued to glorify God. Because when the Spirit of God is working within us, he will cause us to give glory to God. He tells them, repent. Be baptized, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And even this word gift, that the gift is a different definition to what's in, uh, in 1 Corinthians. It's a different definition. This gift here is the free gift that's being given to you. He said you're going to get the free gift, the promise that was given. You're going to receive that. Check out what happened. And with many words, he solemnly testified and kept on urging them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. He kept ministering. He kept going. He kept giving them what they needed to hear. And let's look at the response. Verse 41. I love it. I love it. So then, those who had received his word were baptized. And that day, there were added about 3,000 souls. We go from 120, come on now, to 3,000 more. Because God is about multiplication, the Holy Spirit came so that there would be an increase. When the Holy Spirit is operating in our lives, he brings those people to us that need to hear the gospel because he's about multiplication. So when we're talking about being spirit-led and compassion-driven, understand that God is doing this with purpose. He's doing this with intentionality, that there's assignments that are coming to you, and you need to be ready to deliver what the Holy Spirit says because those people are going to be added into the kingdom of God. And glory will not be brought to you, but it will be brought to him, and the kingdom will have advanced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The move of the Holy Spirit is going to add to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Look what happens next. Verse 42, and I'm almost done. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. This brings us to even what we're trying to do today. That God has called us to be community. I, I can't even imagine what happened that day. That 3,000 people got saved. That's a lot of baptisms. Hello. It's a lot of baptisms. That's a lot of counseling. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because that was just one day. No telling what was going to happen the next day. But one thing that we get led into in the word of God is that something happened amongst that group of people. As something happened within them, they received a transformation that caused them to need to be a community. To support one another. To try and even understand what is this that we just experienced. Even some of us today are still even yearning, I need to know more. I want to know more about what the Holy Spirit is doing. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They made this commitment that we are going to surrender ourselves to digging deeper. Somebody say, dig deeper. We want to know more. This church is a word-teaching church because we want to know more. We want to dig deeper. 
It says that they devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and to fellowship. They became a community. They did life together. Because I imagine with some of those nations that when they made this decision, that was not going to be a good thing when they got back home. I imagine some of them were going to be persecuted within their families. Their families were going to turn away from them because all of a sudden they became a Christian. I imagine that there was going to be a lot of difficulty. But yet these people were able to say, we're going to come together and we're going to be a family and we're going to support each other. We're going to fellowship with one another. We're going to do life together. It says, and they committed to the breaking of bread. That each time that they would come together and they would just be celebrating together over a meal. And they would remember in that moment that Jesus died for their sins. They would remember in that moment that his blood was shed for them. They would remind one another every time about the sacrifice of Jesus. How often are we doing that? As a church, once a month. But every time we get together, there should be this rejoicing and this remembrance and this reminder, Jesus did it. Touch your neighbor and say, Jesus did it. It's a reminder of the community that something happened. Some of you today, this morning, even had a something happened moment. Something happened. They committed themselves to the breaking of bread and to prayer. These elements of the community were so powerful. And even for us today, we want to continue to build upon that. The digging deeper, the fellowshipping with one another, the breaking of bread to remember what Jesus did, and to prayer. Making a commitment that we're going to live this life of something happened. Hallelujah. Being this group of people that are filled with the Spirit and are compassionately driven. Compassionately driven. We do life together. Check out verse the next two verses. The next three verses, praise the Lord. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. And many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all the believers were together and had all things in common. And they would sell their property and possessions and share them with all to the extent that anyone had need. My God, it would be so awesome if every need in this church right now would be met. Anybody that had a need, we would be able to meet it together. And, and don't miss the first part of that. There was a sense of awe. That every time the community was together, in that, in that early time of the church, there was a sense of awe that, man, something happened. I bet you, if we had a sense of awe every single day, you would see more of a move of God in your life. Having a sense of awe, something happened. You ever see somebody that's just in awe? You, you look at them and they just look like, it's almost like bewilderment, but it's a little bit of amazement. Because something happened. I bet you if that money came. Come on now. But for some reason in the church, we just gotten really dull. Like nothing's happened. We come Sunday after Sunday like nothing's happened. Praise the Lord. I got my new glasses. Something happened. I mean, is this where we are with the church? S something happened. I got new shoes. I, not, I, not literally, but 
Something happened. I got a new job. Something happened. And that's the sense of awe that we're having? It's just a question. Because whatever they were experiencing, it drove them to be together. It drove them to be of one mind. It drove them to lay all of their other priorities down and be together. I challenge us to have that sense of awe that something happened. It wasn't just what happened years ago when I got saved, but even to this morning, something happened. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something, something happened. And now I know he touched me and he made me whole. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. See, it's not dull. I'm in awe. Something. Something happened, and now I know he touched me, and he made me whole. I'm going to tell you, it does take all of that. It does take that sense of awe that something happened. That every single morning I'm going to get up and even when I don't feel like it, I'm going to get up and I'm going to declare, Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, fill me today. I don't know what's on the, the agenda, but Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, have your way in me. Holy Spirit, pierce my heart. Help me not to have a hard heart. Holy Spirit, I want to do what the Lord God says. Holy Spirit, empower me today to say no to my flesh. Holy Spirit, empower me today to have discernment. Holy Spirit, I need the wisdom of God when I go into this meeting. Holy Spirit, I need the discernment to know who I need not be by today. Holy Spirit, I need the discernment to know who I am supposed to be by today. Holy Spirit, let me know who I'm supposed to give to today. Day. Holy Spirit, when I don't have what I need, Holy Spirit, help me to have the faith to remember that you are my provider. Holy Spirit, move in me. Let's bow our heads. Something, something happened, and now I know. He touched me, and he made me whole. I want to offer salvation to you today. You might be here today, and you have not been touched by the Spirit of God, but yet you are feeling the Spirit move in you. You haven't given your life to Jesus. And I want you to know that Jesus is available to you. When Peter preached that message, he let them know that that the doors of salvation, the doors of, of being made right with God are now swung open. That now you can freely come and have your sins forgiven. You can freely come and be part of the body of Christ. That you will be filled with the Spirit of God because that was the promise that he made. You might be here today and you say, I want that. I want Jesus in my life. I surrender. I say yes. Just like the people in Jerusalem said, brothers, what, 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 what can we do? Repent. Be baptized. 
And if that's you today, I want you to just raise your hand. I, I want to receive Jesus as my Savior today. He made it possible for you. Hallelujah. Stephen, I want you to come and I want you to pray with Michael. Hallelujah. Steve, yep, I want you to come and I want you to pray with Michael. Hallelujah. You might be here today and you say, you know, I've, I've been real disobedient with the Spirit. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Michael Brown, right here, right here. Praise God. You may have been a person that is just, you know, I, my, my, my relationship has been dull. I've been missing the fire. I've been letting other priorities get in the way. Life, the cycle of life has just become more of a problem. And I haven't been able to connect with you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is inviting you to repent now. I do not say that in a condemning way. But he's inviting you to repent. Change your mind. Change your mind that I want the Holy Spirit to govern me. Precious God, you see your people here today. You've called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. You filled us with the promise of the Holy Spirit. But we haven't always been obedient. We haven't always surrendered. And so we ask for your forgiveness in this moment. We've been missing our awe. We've been missing the, the, the fresh water. We've been missing the joy of our salvation. But I thank you that you're touching us in this moment. I thank you that you are wrestling with us in our hearts. May we say yes to you. May we surrender unto you that we would be your servants in this earth. There's so many people that you want to draw, and I know that you want to use us. And so, Lord, help us to be your people that are spirit-led and compassion-driven. Help us to walk in the practicality of that as we lead these lives daily, that every morning that we would beckon you every morning we would knock on the door of your presence every morning that we would surrender to you every morning we would surrender to your word and, and, I, and I tell my boys the same thing get into the scriptures now because the day is going to go and you're not going to get back to it Lord God may your spirit Arise in us where every single day we have a something happen moment that we move in awe of your presence, that your spirit is alerting us just like he did Peter, just like he did the 120, to proclaim the goodness of God. We thank you, Father. We thank you that you're so good to us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.